going down to the house of sausage. I got my barbecue shoes on. I'm going down to the house of sausage. I got my barbecue shoes on. Welcome to BarbecuePitBoys.com. Today we're going to show you a few tips and tools to get you grilling like an expert at your next barbecue. All right. We like to uh, have ourselves a long pair of tongs here, stainless steel tongs, and uh, get yourself a good knife. That happens to be a old hickory. Here's a long spatula. So you can work your uh, burgers or whatever you got going from the fire. Now you want to have a, a brush for mopping. And uh, this is a, a standard oven thermometer. It's good to keep alongside whatever you're cooking. This here is a candy thermometer type for inserting in the top of the grill. And this here is an instant read thermometer, chef's thermometer. You got to have it if you want accurate temperatures of whatever you're cooking. All right. Now, of course, you want to have some rub. You can buy some off the shelf or you can make your own. These here are your standard spices like salt, garlic, and pepper. Here's some uh, oil. You can use olive oil or vegetable oil. This here is a coarse grain salt. This is like a chef's salt or a kosher salt or a sea salt. And here is a pepper mill, so you want some uh, fresh ground pepper. All right. A couple other things you want around your pit is a pan for either boiling or steaming and then uh, a black iron pan here for uh, searing or frying. It's real good to have them around the pit. Now, let's talk a little bit about charcoal. This here is a uh, charcoal briquette. Um, this is a good quality briquette here. It's really just compressed uh, wood chips and uh, it's held together with binders and uh, it gives you a real consistent heat and it's a good place to start when you're doing uh, charcoal grilling. All right, now this here is a natural uh, charcoal. This is called a lump charcoal. Uh, this will give you more flavor, but uh, this is a much more difficult uh, charcoal to use and uh, we often combine this with a good briquette to give us a flavor. Now. Uh, and then here uh, we've got some chunk wood. Now you use this for adding a light smoke to your uh, grilling or even barbecue. And uh, you don't need the chips. You just get the big chunks. You just throw in there and you get a nice light smoke. All right. Now for lighting a fire, this is called a chimney. And we'll show you how to use that. And here's some uh, kerosene, uh, lighter fluid. It can be used safely if you follow the directions. All right. Now. Let's show you how to get a fire going for your barbecue. Now we're here, we're using some uh, briquettes and uh, we'll fill this chimney up to the top. It'll get about 70 uh, briquettes in there. And this will give you a two or three hour uh, grill. Um, and uh, it's plenty enough to do your steaks, of course, and burgers and hot dogs, whatever you got going on. Now to light this chimney, all you need is a few sheets of newspaper, and uh, it's a good way to good way to get a good fire going is using one of these chimneys. It takes about oh, 15 or 20 minutes to get the coals nice and hot and ready for the grill, and you just light it uh, at the bottom holes there, your vent holes. All right, that was easy enough. Now, uh, a little bit about these grills. This here is a kettle grill. It's kind of a standard grill. Um, and uh, pitmasters really like these grills because they're uh, real easy to uh, control the heat, control your flames. Uh, you can use them for grilling steaks, or you can do a nice low and slow, a 10 or 12 hour uh, barbecue on this. Uh, now cleaning a charcoal grill is actually real easy to do. Here I have some leftover charcoal from the previous barbecue and we're going to use that again. Now charcoal is actually economical to use if you uh, shut down your fire immediately after your uh, barbecue. And here we have uh, 
ash cleaner and it just brings on those excess ashes into the ash bin below all right now about 15 minutes has gone by and you can see this chimney has produced some real hot coals and we're setting this grill up for indirect heating we're going to put the charcoal on one side and this will give you a lot of control over your grilling now here's another style pit this here is a much larger pit but you have a lot less control over your uh, grilling and uh, but if you set it up indirect in other words the uh, charcoal on one side and uh, you'll be able to uh, use this grill pretty effectively we generally use it for steaks and, uh, and quick grilling all right Now you want to keep around a shovel and uh, this way you can add or remove uh, charcoal as needed. Now here uh, we've got one of those smaller grills you might take to the beach or the mountains and again you want to do that indirect uh, charcoal uh, heating here. You put the charcoal on one side and you'll be able to do up some nice steaks and burgers on this as well. Now this grill is about 450 to 500 degrees just with one chimney full or 70 briquettes in there and this is a good time to take your uh, grill scraper here and you can clean off the uh, grates real easy. Now again this is set up for indirect heating, the charcoal on one side and uh, this will give you a lot of control over your grilling and barbecue. Now, one feature you really want to look for in your grill is a louvered grate and uh, this will allow you to add additional charcoal as needed especially if you're doing a long low and slow and then uh, you can also add a big chunk of your hardwood in there to produce a light smoke these uh, louvered grates are, are a real important consideration when purchasing a grill. Now controlling the temperature of these grills is fairly easy. Like I said you could go uh, 180, 200 degrees up 4 and 500 degrees and you do that simply with this uh, vent control at the top. You can actually extinguish the fire with this or you can get any uh, temperature range you desire just by uh, opening and closing this vent. All right. And here we keep the vents open at the bottom that gives you a nice air flow and uh, a real controllable fire. All right. Now there's one last thing you need around the pit, especially for the pit master. And then have yourself a cooler and uh, a couple of beers. Now for a more extensive list of what we like to have around the pit, check out our video how-to tips, tools, and spices for barbecue and grilling. Thank you.